The ordinance itself establishes a 2% CID sales tax to begin January of 2021. Uh, the term of the CID will be the earlier of 20 years or the total reimbursement of the CID cap that's included in there of $622,836 as estimated by Saffron. This will be a pay-as-you-go, therefore no bonds will be issued to reimburse the de developer for eligible project costs. The city is allowed a half percent admin fee to oversee the CID disbursements. And finally, this ordinance establishes compliance with the development agreement in connection with this hotel. So adopting the ordinance will authorize the execution of the development agreement and it provides for three main areas, defining and limiting the city's participation, placing project requirements on the developer to earn the CID sales tax, and allowing for revenues to the city should Saffron happen to default. As far as the city's agreement, it will be a 2% CID retailer sales tax imposed on the property in the defined area as we saw on the map. Those collections will be re reimbursed on a quarterly basis back to Saffron uh, to reimburse them for the CID eligible project costs, and that cap being the 622836 term of the CID is the earlier of the 20 year or the CID cap. No bond issuance means pay as you go, which means reimbursement. Uh, the developer uh, fronts all of the costs, which they estimate to be $7,046,870, and they have the anticipation then of the CID reimbursement. The developer has provided in the agreement that they will construct an AVID IHG flagged hotel with the necessary infrastructure to serve the property. They expect project completion to be December of 2020. However, the agreement does provide they're required to provide a certificate of occupancy no later than July 1 of 21. Their incentive is the fact that the CID begins January of 21. Upon that completion, they'll certify to the city for reimbursement of eligible project costs. Saffron also provides that they'll maintain the property under the AVID IHG flag and any change will require the approval from the governing body. Other items included in the development agreement provides for ongoing maintenance of the property, no prohibited land uses, and compliance with the city's economic development policy, which includes an annual report to us and a certificate of good standing with the Kansas Department of Revenue. Remedies allowed in the development agreement include a 30-day notice, should there be any default on either party's part, uh, development agreement termination and ceasing of CID sales tax reimbursement, as well as other remedies provided by law that allow enforcement of provisions in the agreement or preserving the rights of the city.